people from Purdue University, like including JP and David, me and Steve, and Abhishek and BJ. And let me first introduce uh, our institution. We are uh, University of uh, Southern California, and uh, we are from University of Southern California, but from uh, Arlington, Virginia, not from LA. Uh, USC has uh, Information Science Institute, the research lab in uh, West Coast, and also in East, East Coast. And we are from uh, East Coast. And uh, we've uh, contributed uh, pretty much to this OpenStack uh, community, including heterogeneous architecture support. So for the, uh, this uh, Folsom release, uh, we pushed the code for scheduling heterogeneous architectures, architectures. So now, with Folsom release, if you specify uh, some uh, flags like uh, uh, instance type extra spec in your nova.com file and specifying CPU architectures like x86-64 or ARM or something like that, then the scheduler can handle it with the support of uh, in, uh, with the proper instance type. And also we did some work on uh, a big a shared, a shared memory system like SGI UV system. And also we have worked uh, to support the GPU under OpenStack. And we plan to push the code for GPU support uh, on, uh, in the Gridly release. And then uh, we also worked hard on bare metal provisioning and with uh, many companies like uh, including Entity Docomo and HP and NEC and uh, Caldata and um, a lot more companies. And uh, from SX version, uh, the Talera architecture was supported as a bare metal, as a bare metal node compute, compute node. And uh, we are uh, trying hard to push the code for uh, Pixie and IPMI support for a bare metal provisioning. And uh, yesterday, we did a pretty good uh, design summit session, and we agreed on most of the design decisions, and we hope uh, that code will be merged into Gridly uh, RC1, we hope. And for high-performance uh, computing support, uh, yeah, I mentioned a little bit. Uh, we worked uh, uh, hard to support GPUs. Uh, for the previous, uh, so far, we worked for uh, LXC, uh, to support NVIDIA, uh, NVIDIA GPU, uh, GPU, uh, GPUs. And for the, we will, we plan to push that code in the Gridly. And also we are, uh, we plan to work on uh, supporting GPU under Gen server. So uh, we'll work on that and we'll also plan to push the code in the Gridly. And also we are working on, uh, and also very interested in networking. Like we are testing some high bandwidth, uh, high bandwidth network like InfiniBand, and we are testing, and we will try to collaborate with anybody who are interested in that field. And also, high uh, high performance performance story support is the main topic of today's session. And as a last uh, advertisement, we are also hiring. So anybody is interested <laughs> in, just let us know. Surprise. Okay, have you checked? Hi, uh, my name is Abhishek. So I'm actually from Purdue. Uh, I'm a PhD student there and I worked over the summer at ISI and this stuff. So it just, this is a short presentation on our ongoing work. So it's not really complete, but then we had some performance evaluations and some ideas and then just sort of putting it forward here. So uh, here's what we are going to go through. HPFS in cloud, uh, what, what, are, what you will do if you actually try to run HPFS. Uh, high performance programs in a cloud environment right now today and then how can we do better in terms of in better integrating with OpenStack and just in terms of better performance and then we mm, did implement some of those stuff what we thought think are better alternatives and then we got uh, some performance evaluation numbers and then we talk about those and then we conclude uh, yeah and then the the work is still going so we just document what we're right now doing so uh, basically motivation, I think if you look at the literature, it's pretty clear that uh, high performance storage is critical for HPC applications because uh, they basically need high aggregate bandwidth and it should be scalable as you scale your program. So they're used for accessing input output data. A lot of it is just writing. 
like storing checkpoints and also uh, executing algorithms which don't fit into your memory. So those are the main use cases. But r regardless, the point is we need high performance file system or storage. So the papers that we find uh, both in from academia and industry, they just point the single thing that IO and network are the major bottlenecks for running HPC applications. CPUs do fine nowadays uh, because the virtualization technology is good. But uh, so communication and IO intensive benchmarks would perform poorly if you just run it as such on the cloud. So and since ISI is focused on providing cloud for HPC applications, that's the thrust of the program. So this is one of the things that we are looking at. Can we do this better? So the current way would be, so what are the storage options which ha we have? It's on a, on a very high level, it's basically virtual block storage. Uh, it's, it's Nova volumes or Cinder or whatever it is. And you have the web-based key value storage, which is not really relevant for HPC uh, applications right now. So basically what you have is virtual block storage. Now uh, high performance uh, HPC application would need like parallel file systems, right? parallel accesses. So the way to do it would be basically uh, deploy the parallel file system, the we call it the virtual parallel file system on top of the actual block storage. So basically you provision the storage and then you deploy your uh, file servers and the file clients. It's inefficient because it goes through several layers of virtualization and as an user, the user has to manage it entirely. So even, even, in some, even if it's called a high performance uh, offering by a cloud provider, you basically go in there, install all your stuff and run by yourself, which, which the management can certainly be improved and even the performance can be improved. Uh, so that's the two areas we have to look at. So just continuing on that. So basically, these are the steps you would follow if you actually try to install a, a HPFS system. You provision the VMs separately as required and then you might or might not have control over it but the VMs are placed. Install and configure the HPFS servers and clients and then the file access happens through uh, multiple virtualization layers depending on how you've installed it. We'll go through it a little bit more later. And then obviously it's managed by the user, uh, so which is not very attractive in all. So improvements can be made on both fronts. So we actually have uh, focused more on the performance part here, but the management, where by management we mean that can we do the entire thing through OpenStack or some cloud, uh, well here it's OpenStack. Basically the cloud management framework, that would be nice. And then for here we, in our work we targeted the Lustre file system as the backend HPFS installation, so we'll just go over it a little bit. So uh, Lustre file system would be a high performance parallel file system. It can be found in most of the, not most, like half of the supercomputers that, uh, that exist nowadays. So it's basically it can handle petabytes of storage with very high aggregate throughput. The idea is very simple. It has a metadata server. Actually, it has one per installation typically, so which handles the metadata information for the files. And then there are this series of object storage servers uh, which manage the actual I.O. data. And they are backed by storage volumes, which, is, which are called metadata targets for the MDSs and then the object storage targets. And then a file would typically be striped over all or some of those object storage servers. And the aggregate bandwidth would be the sum of the OSS. So it's, it's, it's easily scalable, assuming you can stripe it all over the OSS. And then it supports, it works over, it's an application level uh, soft uh, protocol, if you like. And then it works over the uh, TCP IP and InfiniBand. So in, the, in that sense, it's, it's good. It's just a configurable option in Luster. So that, this is, a, and it's also open source. So this is a common file system that people use. I guess you guys already know it. So we were targeting this as an example. So let's go through the options that we have. This is the one that I was talking about. Basically, if you look at the diagram, you have the VMs here, and then which are provisioned on hosts. And then you have the Luster clients running inside VMs. When I say Luster clients running, it basically it means that you mount the uh, actual server, and then that means the client is running if you can mount it successfully. And then the underlying storage is still uh, virtual block storage, or Nova volumes, or the uh, uh, comparative, comparable stuff in other offerings, but the, the technology is the same. So there is obviously the volume server uh, bottleneck, which can happen if you have only one volume server. I mean, you can have multiple volume servers, but it's kind of hard to manage in the current framework of uh, OpenStack. And the actual <coughs> MDTs and OSTs the, are still just block storages on the VMs. So in this scenario, a file access in guest would go through a block device emulation in the hypervisor, and then again a file access in host. 
So that's like two steps which could be eliminated if we just have a direct file access. I mean, so, so then we are mostly going towards bare metal here in terms of file system, but that, that gives you a lot of performance. So, and then it, there is, so when we run these cluster clients over the VMs, they go through the uh, networks as well. So they kind of hog the networks and then, and then there, if there is a network emulation, the overhead is still there for that too. So we, uh, this is the default framework right now. So let's talk about how this can be done. The, not, not considering the performance, even this framework, we can just improve the deployment, right? You can manage it better. So one idea that we have or we are working on is allow users to deploy the VFS system as a whole from OpenStack, just like having different kind of uh, VMs that we have, we deploy one at a time, but then we can have different configurations of file system where we launch all the VM instances together, the backend storage targets, take care that one, uh, one node has, uh, like there are not, the one OSS runs on one actual node, but otherwise there's a bottleneck problem. I mean, as good as you can but at least have some control over what we are doing. So that would be like a meta service over uh, the OpenStack service. But then we are trying to uh, get that incorporated. So, so and then once we do that, we can have different flavors of this, just like we have flavors of uh, VMs. So that would be something we can do. And then we are still using the virtual PFS that, that, that we talk about, but then this is something we think can be done. Uh, it could be useful. Uh, so at that point, you can go into OpenStack and just deploy your uh, parallel file system framework just with one click. That should be uh, more user friendly. And but then in terms of performance, we can do this uh, this alternative stuff. The first thing that we thought about is basically these are actually not very complicated. It's just uh, simple stuff. But we, this would improve the uh, performance a little bit. Basically, what here we are talking about is the actual uh, parallel file system is deployed uh, bare metal, if you like or natively, there is, the servers are not running in VMs, uh, which, is, which is possible. And then at that point, basically, you run the clients on the VMs, and then they access through the network, uh, access the actual files. So the file access is not direct, not going through the block level emulation that we avoid. So that, that gives you a better performance. So uh, the, the clients are accessing the files over the virtualized network. So that part still remains. But then the servers are at least running uh, directly on metal and then there is no uh, emulation there. So that would be one of the configurations that could be used and then uh, we use that and then there is one more that we used. This is basically improving the client side. So we find that uh, using a virtual file system pass through, I don't know if you know it, I guess this is pretty common too, is basically you run the, the, cli the client, the file system client is now running on the compute host and not inside the VM and then the VM can connect through the compute to the client through a VertFS client, which we used. It's basically a virtualized uh, file system pass through which works over the uh, VertIO transport using the KVM uh, hypervisor. So it, it, this is a zero copy uh, operation, which is nice. Basically, the memory is shared inside the host now. So which is, if you, if you go through the network, the virtualized network, there will be at least one copy of the file in memory before it actually goes out. So this is supposed to give you some performance, which is what we see. So these are the two other ways that we can sort of tackle this one. So implementing this has some, some issues, which we will talk about. Uh, but then these are the performance improvements that we think about we can do. So continuing this, so now we can provide HPFS as a service as opposed to just calling it VPFS because the actual file system is running on metal. So the issues that we face is we have to limit allocation per user. Now this allocation is right on the metal, not through uh, block storage, which could be done because, for example, Lustre supports the quota concept where you can actually, uh, if you have an user, then you can actually uh, limit its quota. So that's fine, but then you have to have a user first. So for that, we need to connect the virtual and native user namespaces. That's one of the challenges. That's also a security challenge. So once you go access from inside the guest, you need to have some kind of control about what the guest is actually accessing because now he's accessing the actual files, right? So what we are trying to do is basically use a uh, unified LDAP database through Keystone and the actual native uh, user authentication. So that would sort of solve this problem. Now we have the same set of users which are inside the guest and also outside. And at that point, we can use ACLs and whatever uh, authentication frameworks. It's already available and then uh, 
uh, that would sort of solve this uh, namespace problem. So we are trying to uh, use a sing, uh, single LDAP backend for Keystone and a native auth authentication. So this is one of the issues that we are facing, but then that I think that that's solvable. So that's where we are at right now in terms of this. So if this thing works out, then we can actually provide HPFS as a service to uh, through OpenStack uh, uh, to the clients, to the users. The other thing that we are working on, it's, it's just another, uh, basically another way to use a parallel file system. It's basically using Lustre as the backend of the uh, virtual block devices. It's not directly related. And this is not very innovative in the sense, uh, I think there are other servers too, like Ceph, which is, uh, which is already in the code. So we are just trying to do a Lustre server. There was a Gluster server uh, blueprint I saw, but then the code is still not there. So so I guess this would be a contribution, if not a uh, very innovative thing to do. So basically, the HPFS servers run on native, the clients run on compute nodes, and then the, this one is simple. So instead of using iSCSI, uh, we use we can use the actual Lustre clients running on the host, and then instead of using a, a LVM kind of driver, we use a Lustre driver. So it, it, that's straightforward, and then we are we are doing that too. But that's not just that's not basically providing the same thing that we're talking about. It's just basically providing a little bit of more bandwidth and reliability to the uh, VBS backend, right? So, but we are working on that too. So yeah, in, in Nova, in OpenStack right now, the volume service uses logical volumes created on volume server exported to iSCSI, I guess you guys know that. And there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the volume server and the backend right now, uh, although there's talk of changing that. Or actually, there, so, I mean, there has been an implementation changing that in the current release, but then anyway, so the point here is we can use Lustre instead of that, and then we don't need the iSCSI anymore because we can just run the Lustre clients on the actual host, and at that point, we can connect, uh, you can use LiveVirt to connect that. So we actually did that, and it, it works out okay. So, and so we sort of implemented this, uh, and then we ha did some evolution, some experiment with this, so to, just to see what kind of access is better, works better. So we used uh, the Luster as the backend, as we talked about, and then uh, used KVM instances on Rails 6. So the, the VertFS framework works with KVM only, but the, as an idea, I guess the other ones, the other VMs, we can have similar uh, frameworks for other VMs, but we are using KVM for here. And then we use IOR, which is a interleaved random benchmark. It's basically a HPC benchmark, and it can be, it has, it can be simulated to, uh, it can be configured to simulate different kind of uh, HPC program accesses. There are papers about that, but uh, this is a, like a popular benchmark to use. So we use that to get some numbers out of our framework. So what we did is we used two clients accessing a Lustre installation. So the clients could learn, uh, run inside VMs uh, or outside VMs on host as we talked about. But basically there are two clients and then the Lustre installation has one MDS and two OSS, and then each OSS has four OSTs. This is not a very big installation, it's a typical small installation, and each file is striped over all OSTs. Uh, the IOR configuration, we are using the MPI IO interface, one task per client uh, writing to and from separate files, and then to avoid the caching, uh, the, if, task, if the client A writes to a file, client B reads it and vice versa, so that there is no uh, read caching in each node, and then we have 8 GB file sizes. So transfer sizes means uh, the size of uh, data that is transfer per operation from memory to uh, disk, and block size is basically uh, the total block, the total size per file here. So it's actually in, in, in IOR, it just means that if you have a loop, it's the total number of total data that transferred per iteration of the loop, let's say. But for, he, for here, it's, we have just one uh, block size. So that's what we that's what we have, and what we found found out is uh, basically this these are the results which are normalized with respect to the VPFS performance, which would be the typical one that we would use, right? Uh, so, sorry, uh, and then what we see is that if you use the client, if you use the file system pass through and the client in VM, we get a big bump in performance, at least in write. Uh, the pass through is the uh, actually does better than the client in VM configuration. It's uh, the native is much more higher, obviously, but even the pass through give, gives, gives you like a 15% improvement. So it's from like 190 to 210 or something. So
So the write, uh, the read improvement is not that much, but it's still uh, better. So it seems using file system pass through is the way to go uh, to provide a uh, HPFS service. So and then that could be that could be incorporated uh, in the uh, as a, in the OpenStack as well. I mean it, it's orthogonal to OpenStack pretty much. So that's what we found out. Uh, that's that's the experiments we did, and then we are still working on it on a bigger installation because this was not very big, and then basically uh, work on the framework to provide this as a, as, a, as a service. So that's pretty much it as a conclusion. Uh, HPFS as a service is an important requirement. That's what we feel, and the people we have talked to, they, they basically agree. And then uh, we presented our ongoing work effectively towards effectively integrating the HPFS in a cloud environment. So we identified and implemented the possible methods of HPFS access in a, uh, from a VM instance. And then the current methods are substantially uh, less efficient than using a file system pass through. That's what we find out. And then so we are still working on implementing this. And uh, that's pretty much it. The ongoing work is what I talked about. Uh, investigate the results a little bit more. Uh, VPFS as a service is, is okay. It's just we need to do the orchestration and the scheduling. This is the first part we talked about. The second part, if we provide native file system as a service, uh, integrating the guest and host user domain is one, one of the challenges, and uh, limiting the user quota is the other one, uh, which is sort of dependent on the first one. So, and we are also are working on uh, Luster Driver as the back end to volume service in OpenStack. So, uh, at some point, all this will come together, and then uh, we might have, we should have a file system uh, service provided through OpenStack for HPC users. So that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, David is here. So David was the one guiding me through this during my internship, so thanks to him and the team. Yes. Oh, so could you speak a little bit loudly? No, no, that oh, it's, it's, a, it's very common. It's yeah. very standardized and open source and used in. Repeat the question. Oh, the question was: Is Luster something that we are doing, or is it available? Yeah, and then the answer is: uh, It is available. It is very, very common in in, in HPC domain. So, man, was the version of the Lotus you used? Right, we use two point one. Two point one. So, my understanding is. Uh, until uh, the version uh, 2.4 next year, uh, the metadata server that, uh, currently it does not support clustering, right? Doesn't support Met metadata object, uh, you know, object metadata uh, server. Yes. It only support, you know, I think two nodes, right? One node or two node. It does not support, uh, uh, I mean, scaling out clusters. So metadata, yeah, right now also it does. It Metadata server is just one for installation, and two if you want failover. Master, slave sort of things, right? Right, right. But that doesn't limit the scalability because metadata server is used once per file access. So it just gives out the metadata information, the file name information. And once a client has that, and it, it can just go along all the object storage servers, which can be many, and collect the actual file data. I think that's how most file systems, parallel file systems work. So. So that's not a very big bottleneck. I mean, so I mean, Luster has been operating in spite of that in, in HPC environment for a long time now. So yeah, it is like that in 2.12, and as far as I know, in 1.8 as well. So but that that's fine mostly. Okay. Another thing is I, I could be skipped back to maybe one page or two page to the to the diagram. Oh yeah, this page. So it sounds like uh, there will be, uh, you know. Uh, a great loss, uh, I mean, uh, moving from native to to virtualization environment, for example, from uh, drop from 300 to 200 right. or drop from 150 to almost 100. So do you, do you have any suggestion, you know, actually when this kind of, uh, yeah. you know, could be uh, used and when so it better not to use the environment? That's, so obviously it's just the client part. The server part is native in both both scenarios and we don't have a suggestion right now we are looking at that precisely that why why is the big degradation and uh, can we what can we do about it so 
Yeah, I mean there there is one idea which we could be done. I mean the file system pass through basically it goes and calls the OS uh, APIs and then we can avoid that. We can actually make it call the direct luster uh, APIs uh, in the host which would sort of avoid one layer uh, and that is just programming and we are we are doing that but I do not know how much it will give and then that is what we are investigating can we do something better. So, in terms of file system yeah that is that is what is vexing us as well. So, so we do not have the uh, exact analysis of where and how much overhead is uh, yeah that is what we are trying to do. But here we at least showed three different implementation of IHPFS for virtualized environment and if OpenStack can provide some structural way to provide as an service and it is really great but native that is the best but so far then they that is like a security concerns and kind of stuff. So, we do not have clear answer right now but we will investigate more. Okay, so yes, it could. So it, it has it is specific to KVM and uh, Linux. It has nothing to do with Luster. You can access a host as well very easily. So so Luster, yeah. I mean, the WordFS was a paper which came out in two thousand nine from in Linux symposium, and they didn't use Luster as the backend. It was just connecting to the host file system. But we use Luster, and it's very it's very straightforward. Yeah, but it's not specific to the host file system. So, it was not clear to me uh, have you actually solved the namespace mapping issue? Uh, no, we do not have a uh, active code to submit. We uh, we are looking at the uh, LDAP formats in uh, basically uh, a common uh, like how Keystone is using it and how we would use it use it in a user authentication and try to map it now, but we have not solved it yet. But Cause I, so, I think this is part of the much broader problem which is not really to do with HPC. People will want to get access to existing file systems without having to dump things into object store or mount yes. NFS servers within instances. Um, yeah, yeah, that's correct. We uh, we have some I don't know customers who have the same problem. Uh, yeah, I mean I I, I I cannot divulge more I guess, but then yeah, that's that's a very common problem. They had a last installation and then this sort of throws them off. Yeah, but if we solve it, we'll. Uh, it will let you guys know I guess. So, it is important and then well, it's we have sound, sounds like you should be involved in the session that is tomorrow morning. Sure, sure. Uh, local storage volume plugin for Cinder because they are looking at a similar thing. Okay. Thank you. Yes. It is part of the set that you mentioned uh, uh, related to the internet uh, and so you also talk something about the tool. Are you oh. running any of these tests? No, these tests were uh, Ethernet only. InfiniBand, uh, we have the hardware we came thi this month. So, we have not tested it yet, but the, the diagram was basically generalizing it. But yeah, the, the test, the results are on uh, Ethernet, yeah, not InfiniBand. But we, th that is for sure we are going to do because we have the hardware now. So. Yes, yes so please. This result, uh, we, we, we do not say that this result is the result. Of yeah, the this is, uh, yeah, not so very, very experimental. Work. Exhaustive. We are working on it. Yes. Um, if you guys look at uh, ZFS and other file systems, and how do they compare with uh, Luster? No, th th we haven't. Well, we took Luster. This is a research institution. Can yeah. So Luster as one of the representative. I mean, it's a lot of work to set it, set these things up, uh, and then a lot more work to work uh, to make a VM work with this installation. So, no, we. I don't think we are going to look at other uh, parallel file systems. Uh, yeah, Luster is what we are figuring out, but the results to some extent should be should be representative, right? Because the the mechanism is the same of most file systems. But uh, yeah, but we are looking at Luster for now. Okay. Yes, please. So, uh, did you look at the latency or just the bandwidth? Because I would expect that the, the these are the bandwidth. One of the really big differences in running in a VM as opposed to running on bare metal, right? Because InfiniBand, one of your big benefits is really that's true. Latency. RDMA, you can really see massive benefits in yeah in that. So, these are do you have any numbers, numbers on how Th VertFS affected the latency? Uh, not really. No, these are bandwidths, but that that's something to see. Yeah, are we are focusing? It'll make more sense to do that once they have IV behind it to test that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
and these are the random numbers. I, I have a question actually related to this audience here. Is there anyone working already on, on porting this kind of solution to HPC for the future for the software? Well, so we're, we're getting hit in the next month that's pretty similar to this. So we're going to be running Lustre for our VM disks, and um, that's all going to be running on FDRIV. So we'll be looking at pretty similar stuff. Um, right. But I don't know whether that we'll be able to deploy that in production or whether we'll have to use something a little more standard. I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you.